In this video, I will be demoing ESP RFID tool, the sub $20 tool for reading and logging data from a Wagend interface. RFID tools can be installed inside a RFID reader and alongside a battery pack to create a portable standalone unit for capturing and logging badge credentials. This is a HID 5355 ProxPro reader with a RFID tool unit installed alongside a battery pack. It has a read range of around 6 inches. Here's an HID card. And what's happening is the RFID reader scans the badge and outputs the card number via the Wagend interface and the RFID tool captures and logs that data. The size of the 5355 unit makes it fairly easy to conceal, but if you need more range, the larger, more expensive HID 5375 Maxi Prox unit has a read range of over 2 feet. RFID tool may also be planted into an existing access control system as seen with this display I have built. The RFID reader here is capable of reading EM4X RFID cards. Fingerprint and code entered on the pen pad. With this particular access control system, valid credentials are linked to user ID numbers. When an invalid RFID tag is read, the card number is output via the Wagend interface, but the electronic deadbolt does not open. When a valid RFID tag is read, the user ID that the RFID tag is linked to is output via the Wagend interface and the electronic deadbolt opens. The same is true for the biometric reader and the pen pad. When a valid entry occurs, the user ID number linked to the credentials is output via the Wagend interface and the electronic deadbolt opens. Although, when invalid credentials are entered using the biometric reader or pen pad, nothing will be output via the Wagend interface. Let's test an EM4X card that's not in the system. The full card number should have been output via the Wagend interface of the card reader and also get logged by the RFID tool unit. But of course, as you saw, the electronic deadbolt did not open. Now let's tie that card to a valid user ID and also enter several fingerprints and PIN codes. Your reader may be different, but this particular reader's administration panel is accessed via star one, two, three, four, five, six. I will erase any stored credentials now for the purpose of this demo by entering star two and then four zeros and finally pressing the pound symbol. Now I simply scan the card to add it to the system and now when this card is used it will unlock the electronic deadbolt. Next I would like to enter some biometric credentials so I just simply scan my fingerprint twice. Now that finger will unlock the system. And also my thumb will unlock it. Entering PIN codes though at this system is slightly different. The user ID has to begin at 501 or higher to associate it with the PIN code. So I simply enter a user ID of 501, press pound, enter any four to six digit pin code and press pound to store so let me get back to the admin interface that timed out let me enter the user id number 
and then I'll choose all of these. I'll choose four zeros for the pin code. All right, so now four zeros will unlock the electronic deadbolt. All right, let's start by scanning my EM4X RFID tag. As you see, it's now been entered as a valid credential, so it unlocked the electronic deadbolt. And also, as that happened, the user ID number has been output via the WAGON interface, and it was logged by the ESP RFID tool. Now, also try out several biometric credentials. First, that finger. Watch out, dead boy unlock. Then my thumb. Unlock. And I'll use my middle finger, which is not a valid credential. Nothing happens. All right. And then finally, I will enter the pin code. One, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, zero and pound enter. Meanwhile, in the background, the RFID tool is logging any data that gets output from the card reader's WAGON interface. Now, let's see how that data looks that we just captured using the RFID tool unit. First, you have to connect to the Wi-Fi access point named ESP-RFID-Tool. Then, you will point your web browser to 192.168 Point one, point one. That will bring you to this page right here. You'll then click on List Exfiltrated Data and choose the log.txt file. Now the first credential you'll see is that first card read from the EM4X tag. Now this is before it was entered into the RFID reader as a valid credential. So what you see is the actual full card number being output and captured. Um, this is the typical format that you'll see from most RFID readers. The full card number being output from the WAGON interface, headed towards the WAGON controller. And this is typically what gets captured by the RFID tool unit. Although, if you remember from earlier, this particular access control system is somewhat unique in that valid credentials get output as a user ID number instead of the full card number. So, the next entry we see is the same EM4X tag, but in this case, it is a stored valid credential for this access control system. And then the following entries are my index finger, and that's the user ID associated with my index finger, and my thumb, and that's the user ID associated with my thumbprint. And finally, the last credential is user ID number 501 associated with the 40 pin code. Now let's take a look at the experimental transmit mode. On this page you can replay captured credentials or any binary data that you choose to transmit and then you can also fuzz a Wigan controller. There's two options. The first is transmitting a bit simultaneously on both data lines, and the second option is transmitting bits alternating between the data lines. And with the latest software release, I've also added a push to open button. And some access control systems have a push to open wire and you'll see a button like this right here that says push to exit or something similar and let me go ahead and hook up this I have added this feature to the RX pin also known as GPIO3 
and it's broke out on this programming header right here. So I'll go ahead and hit the push to open button from the web panel. As you see, the electronic deadbolt has unlocked and the RFID tool unit has a screw terminal block right here and a typical installation only requires four wires the power, the ground, and then data zero and data one which are the white and green wires and that's all that's required to operate the RFID tool unit. For additional features the pins broke out on the programming header may be used. In the case of the push to open button, like I said earlier, we chose to use the RX pin. Remember, there are several pins broke out on the programming header and the software is open source. So these pins can be used for many different purposes. So if you dedicate these pins to a particular purpose, you'll still have the ability to update the firmware from the web interface. So please feel free to experiment and I actually encourage you to modify the software but if you come up with something useful please submit a pull request to our github page so others can also benefit. The RFID tool also has a settings page for configuring the network setting usernames and passwords the web interface and the FTP server enabling and disabling the power LED, changing the name of the log file, and other experimental settings. And, find, and you can also format the file system from the web interface. This will erase your log files. You can upgrade the firmware, which the latest release will be on our website under releases and then there's a help page documenting general usage and it also contains some licensing information. For more detailed help including installation wiring diagrams to find links on where to purchase a unit or just for more general information please visit www.rfid-tool.com